What areas of the roster are you still looking to address, and are you done with catching now? Um, well, we uh, um, are actively working on our catching uh, situation, and I'm I, uh, very hopeful that we'll have something official there soon, but, but we'll see. Um, we're still in the process of uh, examining people that might come in and, and uh, help the, the shortstop competition and the, the infield competition, both from a depth standpoint and um, you know, also somebody that um, you know, could, could come in with a, a good leg up on the competition, but we'll see uh, you know, where exactly that lands. And um, uh, you know, everyone's looking for pitching. We're always looking for pitching. We've got to be mindful of the calendar. This is going to be a crazy three weeks. Um, you know, we've kind of been through this before in 2020, but I think this is going to be more challenging because of the, the 162 game season and the lack of contact that we've had until just recently with these guys um, and wanting to be careful with a, with a number of, of our pitchers. So um, once again, no, no playbook for that, but it's something that we're bearing in mind. And, um, you know, we want to have some um, uh, external competition from the 40-man roster for the pitching staff, but also the, the group of pitchers that we have on the 40-man roster that we that we like that are still in the process of kind of getting their footing as, as major league starters or major league relievers. We want to you know leave some uh, availability for those guys to do their thing this year too, and we continue to evaluate them. Um, <clears throat> given you know where you are with your roster. Um, do you anticipate making any multiple year offers or do you think if you bring people in right now it's going to be a one year variety? Yeah, it's probably unlikely uh, unlikely that we're, we're in multi-year um, mode at this point in time. I mean, you never say never. There's still a lot of free agency happening um, and also the, the trade discussions are kind of feels like late July. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, but um, I, you know, I'd, I'd uh, hedge against it at this time to answer your question. What have just the last few months been like in dealing with the things that were in place during that time? I hate to say this, but uh, we're getting used to uncertainty in this business. Um, you know, it's been three years of new rules, new uh, calendars, new um, considerations, new protocols every day. Um, and, it, you know, we don't complain working in professional sports by any stretch, but it's been challenging and it has colored everything that we've had to do over the last three years. It's been the first and foremost thing on your mind when you go about your business is just what's, what about this? What, what happens if this happens? You know, we just can't plan. Everybody's dealing with it. Um, everybody's making progress with whatever they're doing with their organization despite all this. I, I count us amongst that group. I think we've gotten a lot done as an organization over the last three years despite these challenges. Um, but I know that us and the players, um, we're all really, really, hoping for and looking forward to a nice multi-year stretch of uh, um, normal, thriving Major League Baseball and Minor League Baseball. One of the big stories in camp is going to be Rutschman. Uh, will, the new C will this new CPA and the rules factor into whether he starts the season with a team? No, it's nothing to do with rules. Uh, he's in Major League camp. Um, he's one of the brightest talents in the minor leagues in the sport. Um, you know, he's been through a lot the past couple of years, like everybody. I think if you're in Major League Camp, you've got a shot to break with us. Um, when you're not on the 40-man roster, it's oftentimes different than the guys that are already on the 40-man roster. But I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what he's going to do. Um, and, um, you know, we'll see what group of catchers we really um, finish here in, in terms of putting together for our, our camp here soon. But um, um, you know, it's going to be exciting watching. How much did the shortened spring training impact your non-roster invite list? Were there some guys you would have put on it otherwise? Yeah, yeah, a lot. And we're still we're still going. There's going to be, I think, there's going to be some um, additional free agent guys that have major league experience. Um, I think the biggest impact is a, a lot of our top prospects that really realistically don't have a chance to break opening day. Some of the guys that like finished in Bowie last year, I would say. Um, that we're super excited about, you know, ordinarily you'd have him in here for experience, you know, you'd have um, a Colton Kowser in here for experience, um, and we just decided with the calendar it didn't make sense to bring them in as official invites and then, and then you know, send them out so as quickly as we're going to need to to thin the numbers down. That said, uh, we do plan on pulling those guys over to play in some games, hopefully, because I know Brandon's 
uh, planning to not have some of our major league guys up on their feet for nine innings as you do in a normal with spring training, but also this year in particular, it's like a little more sensitive. So we'll, we'll be seeing some of those guys, and I think that'll be fun, even though they're not official in our eyes. What was the challenge the past couple months with guys injured at the end of last season, get surgeries at the end of last season? Mo you can monitor them as closely and kind of get what's the process been like getting them back up to speed and seeing it, where they're at? It, that's been tricky. Um, I, I think, fortunately, anyone that had a uh, invasive procedure, it happened before the lockout, so we we're able to kind of get our arms around it, and um, it doesn't sound to me like anything uh, too eventful happened during the lockout. Um, you know that we weren't we weren't aware of or pre prepared for. So um, I know it's just been weird for our doctors and and trainers to not have the normal and strength coaches and, and baseball coaches to just not have the normal um, insight uh, to what these guys are doing. Um, and uh, it, it wasn't great for anybody, but um, you know hopefully it doesn't happen again. You don't play in Toronto until June, but do you have an idea of how those rules will impact your roster? Well, right now, uh, as it stands, and you know, I guess it's it's up to the Canadian government, so um, not something that baseball has a lot of control over. But it, it sounds to me like uh, unvaccinated players may not be able to go play in in Toronto. Fortunately for us, we have a very very high percentage uh, with this group of, of vaccination, so you know we're probably less affected than what I read about other teams in our division. Have you looked at, have you looked at adding any veteran outfielders? Not really, um, because we have a lot of uh, depth on and off the 40-man roster there. I mean, uh, you know, that could change with uh, one injury right out the gates or an opportunity that's out there, but it has not been a big priority for us because we want to see these guys play, these outfielders. How long can you wait on pitchers? Because obviously you guys got to get going and get build these guys up, but you know, somebody might fall to you as far as monetarily speaking. How much can you wait on pitchers right now? Well, I, I think the in terms of being a, a stretched out guy, meaning a multi-inning guy or a starter on opening day, it seems to me like the clock is ticking in the next couple of days, uh, but we are actively uh, looking at guys um, that, you know, with the mindset of perhaps not having them break the opening day team and, and letting them ramp up responsibly and then joining the team. Um, it, that's going to have to happen for some of these guys uh, as it goes further and just one of those things this year. Disappointing for you about no Rule 5 draft. That's been a way you guys have been able to fill out the roster. Um, I mean, we, we would have had the number one pick. I'm sure we would have taken somebody. On the other hand, I'm sure we would have lost a player or two from our own organization and we liked them. and. Um, so it's just one of those things. It's affecting all the teams pretty much equally, and you know we, we, we move on quickly when stuff like that happens. Do you think uh, Chris that's going to be ready to play at an affiliate to start the season? Uh, well, unfortunately, he pulled his hamstring uh, the other day in a game. Um, he was looking great. It was it was one of the first few like real baseball games he's played in a while. And he was diving for a ball. And at this point in time, that's that's really all we know. We're going to get some diagnostics further. Uh, it stinks, but the most important thing is um, his uh, his internal health. Uh, everything's going really well there, and um, on a number of levels, that's that's the most important thing. It's almost you know somebody gets normal athletic injuries after going through something like that. It's it, it's in a weird way, you know, you're kind of back to normal. So, but he look, I mean, he's we we had him facing. Um, live pitchers uh, all winter. Um, he's been here in Sarasota basically all winter and involved in every camp that we've possibly done. And we're trying to catch him up with at bats, but to the degree that this costs him some at bats the front end of the season and delays his pro debut, it's going to be a shame, but we're just going to keep pushing through it and fighting through it. And um, he's as tough as they come. We've learned that. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Signing Lyles. What would you like about the fit or the conversations like and just what will meet him uh, that's how we targeted? Well, we've got means and then we've got a bunch of other really young, interesting pitchers that have not fully cemented themselves as, as uh, major league starters yet. I think some of them are going to this year. Um, and we wanted to uh, take some of the burden off those guys and uh, bring in some more experience to go along with John and uh, Jordan Lyles 
uh, somebody who's been in the major leagues for a long time, a logged a lot of innings, particularly last year. He finished very strong, and our scouts and analysts have identified some things that we hope we can get him to continue doing that will bring his um, his uh, results a closer to what he showed down the stretch as opposed to his, his full season numbers. Um, he's always been a talented guy with a really nice delivery and a nice pitch mix and an ability to log innings, and he throws strikes. And all of those things are going to help us. Plus, the um, I think the veteran presence in the rotation, you know, it's something that um, we need and, and, and lack for. So there's a lot that he brings to the table. And um, we like the fact that, um, you know, we have a, an option on him for next season as the team projects to continually get better. If it, if it goes well, we're going to be able to keep him beyond this year. You said that if the guy's here in camp, they have a chance now. But obviously, you got Grace Rodriguez in camp. Uh, what are your expectations for him? What do you want to see out of him in the limited scope you're seeing him now? Where, where do you see his season going? Well, I mean, first and foremost, um, it kind of goes without saying, but especially the last couple of years, it's like health and having a successful major league camp. This is a kid that would have uh, probably done this already, but for the circumstances we've had to endure the past couple of spring trainings. So that experience of, you know, pitching Aaron Judge or whoever he's going to see down here in Florida, you know, that's something that he hasn't had really had yet, and um, that's going to be big. And um, he did uh, have a spectacular season in, in AA. He logged a lot of innings. We were very careful with him. Um, he's somebody that's been here since minor league camp opened, so he's been pitching and is pretty, pretty geared up now. Um, but we've got to get him prepared for a full season and one that I uh, very much hope includes a lot of big league time whenever that comes. But I, I think that's within reach for him, if not right away, very soon. We'll just have to see. It, uh, innings limits, pitch count limits on him, is that going to change at all going into the, to the 2020? Yeah, it's something we have a discussion about. I mean, we very purposely, we did not think that 2021, coming off of the the alt site experience of 2020 and the start and stop spring training and then the alt site and then the instructional league the 2021 was the year to to have a guy like him start pitching into the seventh eighth ninth inning in pro ball even though that's something you you want to do at some point in time and you know we do have a, a plan um for how we want to manage his in innings and hopefully if we're able to stick to the plan um get him deep into games. Um, it's probably not something that we're going to do early in the spring, but if things are going well and we get later later in the spring, um, you know, we might start seeing that and we want to see that. But I, I, I'm, I'm happy about the decision that we made to kind of keep them to, to, you know, five innings or so last year. And you'll look and, you know, they got through, I think, 120 innings last year. Um, so he, he, he got the innings totals and it had we gone further than that, we would have had to shut him down early. and. I think the fact that he was able to pitch across the calendar so long was more, um, more valuable to him than than um, having a couple games where he goes into the seventh. Coming off last year, kind of a similar question: How do you view the progression for D.L. Hall? Well, you know, he he did not throw many innings last year because of his early injury. Um, the great news, the most important thing, is that has healed. Um, he during the lockout he has been throwing and throwing hard and he's kind of ready but we want to be smart with him and be careful with him because platforming off of the 39 real innings that he threw last year whatever the number is it's a little tricky uh, but he's on the roster he's I think if he's throwing strikes he's pretty close to big league ready uh, we may see this guy in the big leagues this year and we may see him quick if, if it's the right thing to do and so managing that with with um, uh, being responsible about his career and innings total. And again, this is an inexact science. I mean, going through three years of this and just, just innings uh, budgeting as it, you know, there's no, there's no data behind this, but we just try to, we bring all of our experts in and try to do the most sensible thing that we can. And we're certainly gonna do that in his case. He's, uh, he's a hell of a talent.